Hey everybody, welcome back. We are going to continue our polar alignment series this time with SharpCap Pro and their polar alignment tool. I'll be doing this on my Orion Sirius EQG mount, which is basically an HEQ5. The telescope is a 61 EDPH2 from SharpStar, and the primary imaging camera is a ZWO ASI 1600mm. I also have my focuser and my filter wheel connected to this. So when you go into tools and then polar alignment, you can go ahead and just start it up. And the first thing it's going to do is solve your current location. So once it's solved, and it says solve down here, we can go ahead and click next and give it a second and it will ask us to rotate our RA axis. So I'm going to do that by loosening the clutch on my mount and rotating about 90 degrees. Now it'll detect this rotation and start to give you a polar alignment error that you see on the screen. And what it wants you to do before you do anything else is to go ahead and click Next and it'll solve it. And then it'll give you these parameters at the bottom here. So we'll see poor, the overall alignment error, and then we'll see what I have here is left and up. The top line could either say left or right, the bottom will say up or down, and it's telling me what direction to move in. There's also a visual indication on the screen where they want me to move that star up into that area above it. The reality is I just use the right, left, up, down at the bottom, and I'm trying to get smaller numbers. I'm trying to approach zero on both of those. One other thing I do want to call out is that if you're at 90 degree rotation, your alt as is actually controlling uh, the opposite thing you would expect it to, right? So when I'm at this 90 degree rotation right now, when I manipulate my altitude adjustment, um, I'm actually going left, right. When I move my um, azimuth, I'm actually going up, down. Okay, so I'm going to go and hit restart here. I like to restart the process um, occasionally. It sort of level sets the whole process for me. Sometimes um, I just lose the visual on the screen occasionally if I was too far off base in the first place. So you hit restart, go back, and just start the process over. Click next, wait for it to solve. It'll tell you when to rotate the axis. And now in this case, I'm going to rotate the axis back 90 degrees to what is a more traditional park position. Okay, it's, it's detected the alignment. We can see I'm still left 1815, right? Some of this is seeing conditions. It'll bounce around. It's telling me to go left and to go down. So I'll come back over here. And again, uh, in this case, if I manipulate my altitude, that's going to be my up-down. So we can kind of keep our, keep our eye on that here. Notice I'm moving down, and that's going down to 639. And the knobs are actually sticking on me here a little bit. So I went down quite a bit and got really close at 0 0.22, 0 0.28. Uh, and then, you know, I can actually, when I get this to lock and stay in place, I'll then be able to go on to my azimuth, which will be my left and right knobs. And uh, I'll do that right now. And I'll try to get that to go, of course, in the right direction, ideally. Um, and we'll go back here, approaching 4, 5, 2, 1, 8. And getting a little bit closer. And again, I'll just go restart again. So another thing you can do is zoom in, and I'll show you that here in a second as well. But it's a lot of a uh, little bit back and forth. It's not that difficult. I don't, I don't find it as easy as the pull master. But it's just restart the process, let it solve, click next, rotate the axis 90 degrees, let it come up with the polar alignment error, and then uh, we'll be able to click next and then start adjusting the knobs again. So it's a little bit back and forth from the computer to the mount to the computer to the mount. Here I'm going to zoom in and see if I can't get a little bit closer to what we're looking at on screen. And what we're looking for are those lines, right? If I can get those lines, it means I'm getting really close. Uh, because of my seeing conditions, it'll never sit steady. So I'm just going to do the best I can to get it pretty close. Usually if I kind of bounce back and forth between excellent and good, uh, but I keep seeing excellent show up, that's usually good enough for me. So we'll go ahead and adjust it. 
you may struggle with your um, adjustment knobs as well. Mine stick, so a lot of times I have to turn them slightly in the wrong direction to get them to loosen up, to free up. Um, so I'm kind of a little bit back and forth here. But you can see overall, this is not taking a lot of time. So we'll just keep tweaking this. And again, you can watch the on-screen indications. For me, I'm watching left, right, up, down at the bottom. Trying to get those numbers to get closer and closer to zero. So we're getting closer. And you can see just fine tune adjustments. It's, it's very, very um, touchy as you get close. But you can see here, I've got it to say good, you know, and I'll bounce back and forth between excellent and good. And usually this is good enough for me, right? This is gonna be about as close as I'm gonna get it. Um, especially with the knobs on this uh, EQG mount. So I'm going to call it, say that this is aligned, and just to validate this, since I showed you the pull master in the previous video, what I'm going to do here is jump into my pull master and just see what the pull master thinks. And I'm going to speed this up pretty dramatically here in a second. Um, if you want to watch that video, I'll put a link to it. Um, I'll pop up here at the top of the screen. You should be able to jump over there if you want to see how the pole master works but we're going to go through this really quickly you can see it's a very similar process uh, rotating back and forth um, trying to get its bearings um, identifying stars now you can see this is all i'm off by if you remember with the pole master it wants polaris to be in that rotating circle and we're not off by much now visually and the ability for me to get polar aligned much more quickly, I'd still say pull master, but the reality is that's a hardware-based solution. There's additional cost, and it's certainly um, maybe more affordable, more realistic for people to go with SharpCat Pro. So I just wanted to make sure you could understand the difference between the two. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this up. I'll show you what the guiding looked like after this alignment and uh, we'll be back in subsequent videos to look at a couple more polar alignment options specifically phd2's option and the new plug-in within nina